So I just wanted to talk about um, a few things. So um, for this program, WGU has a like a help group. Um, it's just a bunch of students either in the bachelor's degree program or the master's degree program. I know there are a few master's degree program students in there and um, they are um, with a group set up to help. There's a lot of classes on the Facebook group and um, that we've previously taken or in the middle of and we um, try to help each other as much as we can with the work or if we're not understanding something. Sometimes the instructors think they're clear, but they're not clear. Or WGU posts the information or the scenario, and it's not, no one can understand it. So we, you know, like to help each other out if we can. Some of us are new, like most of, most of, the, most of the people on here are new. We aren't all at the same stages, like some of us are ahead. Some of us are a little behind. I don't say behind, but have more classes to take than others, and that's fine. You know, we all have to start somewhere. Um, so I just want to make you guys aware of that. I think some other things that you might need to like get started with is a computer or you know a laptop with a um, lot of space, good good amount of gigabytes in hard drive because um, you will be rewriting. Um, I think I've rewritten for the most rewrites I've ever written it was probably four. Um, and it's just for little things like my APA is not right or, um, in, in text citations isn't, you know, they aren't right or it's not what they're looking for. Or I have like a wrong sentence or a sentence fragment or something like that. You know, when you start typing, it makes sense when you're typing, but not to anybody else. So, sometimes I get, like, so anxious, and, you know, and I, like, read it, and I think that, oh, it's right, it sounds good to me, but it doesn't make any sense, like, those sentences. So, I usually have to redo. They'll, they'll send it back. Um, for those things, I would say Grammarly. There's a website. It's called Grammarly, and it's pretty, pretty good at, like, helping with... Um, writing because writing is one of my weakest areas so um, let me show you the website so this is the website so we just go to Google type in Grammarly and then um, you know the, these are all my papers that I've written since I've started using Grammarly and um, you just go there it asks you know start a new or create a new document you put your information in there and it will tell you like the errors in the paper or something like that. So this is the most recent one I've written. Um, it says, you know, it's a bit unclear. And it's because like if you write in a passive voice, it'll like, it'll ding you. But the correctness looks good. The engagement is good. Oh, sorry. So the correctness is good. So like that's like spelling errors or... Uh, um, punctuation or something like that misuse or anything then engagement like you know is the paper written well so you will engage the reader you know and then deliver um, does it make sense and I pay for this I pay eleven ninety nine a month for this they do have a free version but the free version doesn't include a lot of these things that you might need like um, it doesn't come with a lot of these options on the side it might do correctness like is your spelling right but that's it microsoft office word it it's okay but i needed something a little more like in depth a little more solid because that's like my weakest uh, and i also use apa citation generator to check my citations um, um when you're just starting out um, I would, I guess, like have an appointment with the writing center, the writing people, and they will actually fix your <laughs> citation for you. Like they'll open your paper in Google Docs, and while they're on the phone with you, they will 
like make corrections as you're talking so you can see and understand what they're doing and why it's correct so what i do is um save the text from one book you're going to always use forever throughout all the class you're going to use the same book so I, I keep that one on backup and then i just follow the formatting for that book that citation for all the rest of them you know the books are all ebooks so the setup is basically the same you know so that's what i do for my citations my in in text citation is just the author's last name and then the date and that's in the parentheses and then period periods and well one period so and that's it it's not too bad doing the citations and the papers now i think the first term is difficult for everyone because um you're getting used to a new um new system a new situation i guess and learning the way wg does things is a little weird but once you get into the hang of it it's not that it's not too difficult you know just following along and making sure that you um you know do what they're asking you to do um it's pretty it's pretty straightforward um i would just follow the little, bo the little boxes i had showed you guys about i showed you guys the little boxes um i don't think see what the light is gonna have but if you follow the little boxes where they make sure um that your content is right or that you're um, um have an acceptable understanding of the material it'll tell you it'll say oh like hey I keep going into this test and this isn't the course but it'll say hey these are the conferences for this class this is what you need to write about so I just follow that because it makes more sense to me so I go to like view task and then I go to Oh, what a compliment, the green boxes. And they'll tell you what they're looking like, like, or tell you what they're looking for. Like this one says, um, the explanation addresses how the coding and billing process impacts, well, impact healthcare organization revenue cycle and is relevant and clear. So how does the billing, how does the billing and coding affect um, the hospital's revenue cycle? Well, that's, I mean, the charge you know that's where the charging is coming in that you know the cpt you know like the the physician's documentation is coded into alphanumeric uh, code numbers letters put into the documentation and that's how you know that's like the first i don't want to say first step but that is part of the billing cycle and those charges compute into money you know so something like that and that's what i use this stuff up here this like little introduction stuff like it, it doesn't make any sense to me and then this stuff right here like discuss how each of the following fraud abuse regulations impact, impact financial decisions made by the health care this one this page this one is a little more straightforward than the other ones i've had some of the other writing scenarios i have have been um fictional fictional um task and i really don't like fictional stuff you know i want to say all fictional stuff, but like fictional stuff pertaining to serious um, paperwork or um, I don't know material. I don't, I don't like that stuff. I don't like hypotheticals. So um, I'm a pretty straightforward person. So this that part makes it uh, difficult. So I enrolled in C uh, eight hundred one today. My uh, course instructor improved it. So these are the classes that I have left now since this paper up here is pending. Um, um, so I started a new class and here's my bottom list and they actually updated my graduation date. So it is now August 2020. So I am really excited about that. Hopefully everything goes well and I am able to get everything finished and get all of my classes finished um, at, in 2020. Um, sorry my camera's shaking, I have a stand, but I think the, 
the neck is like two weeks to hold my phone because I have this huge pillow on the back. Um, so yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to finish August 2020. Um, so we'll see, you know, I, the only thing I still have left to do is to pay for my um, PPE stuff, like my background check and my immunizations. So even if you work for, for the facility like I do, you still have to pay for it. It's a, some type of compliance that WGU has to meet. There's, I mean, they can't get around it. There's nothing they can do. Um, it's something that I guess Ahima or Chima or whomever is enforcing or the federal government is enforcing. Or it might just be their accreditation um, group. They're saying, hey, these students have to go through this process just like all the other students. Because I know the nursing students have to pay and make sure that they take these um, courses or make sure that they um, do the, you know, the urinalysis and the drug testing and the background check. So I, I'm pretty sure since everybody has an externship, I'm not sure about the other, actually I'm not sure about the other bachelor's degree programs or master's degree programs, but I know for us, you know, they're requiring different. So get your money right, I guess. So yeah, if you guys have any more questions, just let me know. Thanks. Bye.